Namaskaram Sadhguru. Um, I lost my mom one. Huh? I lost my mom one month back. I'm going to say it. Okay. So it was sudden, and uh, all my spiritual learning, everything that I did, nothing is working. It's not I, working. No. The death book I read. Everything, Sadhguru, I did. Nothing is working. I cannot cope, Sadhguru. Please help. Well, if somebody says they lost their mother, we are not going to say it's okay. Of course, nobody wants to lose their mothers. However, old they were, because of a certain kind of... I'm saying uh, it's the first relationship in our life. Hmm? Even when you don't know who the hell you are, what you are, just the smell, feel and smell of the mother connected us to that. So it's of immense value, but at the same time, when you were a child, when you were three months of age, you want to stay in a lap. The moment you are three years, you don't want to stay in a lap, you want to run all over the place. Hello? By the time you are ten, three times in a day you think of your mother. <laughs> a lot of them by the time they are thirty, Once in three days, maybe. <laughs> Depends if they are living a good life or a bad life. If they are living badly, they think of their mothers all the time. If they are living very well, so uh, can I say a joke? It's okay. Hello? So, uh, there was a couple who had their only daughter. How many of you are only daughters? Only daughters, okay? All these are… be… be wary of them, these are all heavily pampered females <laughs> Only daughter means heavily pampered females <laughs> So, uh, and then uh, after uh, all this, you know, parents, uh, especially fathers, never think there's a single man on the planet who's fit for their daughter. <laughs> Hello? So after so much searching and uh, all kinds of filters, they put them through, through astrological filter, to social filter, financial filter, 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 filter. <laughs> At the end of it, a man won't exist <laughs> After doing all those filters, they found one man, he was not very good But uh, the girl said, no, I'm going to marry this guy because these filters may go on till I'm eighty. So they got married and they went on a honeymoon. They went away to Caribbean island. Of course they're fine beaches but that's another matter. <laughs> then uh, they went on honeymoon and uh, uh, twenty-four hours, no message from the girl. Father is uh, just really, he's walking around like when she was just about to be born, he was walking around like this in the hospital, like that he's walking up and down twenty-four hours, no message, forty-eight hours, no message, seventy-two hours, no message. And uh, by the time it's fourth day, he said, we should go. We should go to Caribbean islands and see what the hell is happening, what is happening, our girl, she's with that horrible man, she's gone and… Mother was happy in the kitchen doing her stuff and she said, 
Yes, John, don't worry, just relax, what's it? I would be worried if she was sending messages every day. <laughs> if she's sending messages every day, obviously something wrong out there. She forgot about us and that's the best thing. Hello? When you get married, man or woman, in some way you must forget your childhood life. Otherwise you'll never live a complete life there. It doesn't mean you're not grateful for people who raised you, you're not, uh, you know, that's not the point. The point is when you move from one phase of life to another, in some way you must keep one thing aside. Otherwise, you will breed terrible mother-in-laws who are all over the place. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I'm telling you, even when you were two years of age, when you just found your feet, you wanted to get off your mother's lap, yes or no? If she only held you to her breast, even when you're eight, would you want it? She would break away, isn't it? Hello? Ah, when you're two months, well, you wanted that badly. So we must understand life, need to move. And at least your mother and my mother and for fortunately for most of us, they did not exit when we were two months old. This is a big fortune. When we badly needed them, they were there. Now that you've grown up standing on your feet, they're going. They must go when it's their time. We don't wish them that they should go, but it's natural process that they must go, isn't it? This happened. I have told you this many times, but because you've forgotten, <laughs> I'm reminding you. <coughs> A rich man built her a wonderful house. Wonderful house means you don't know how many rooms are there because there are more rooms than you can use. Hey, you know what that is <laughs> That's a wonderful house where uh, slowly spiders will do well <laughs> And uh, when they, in India there's a culture when they build a one... when they build a wonderful house, they will invite either a sage or a seer or a yogi to come and bless their home. So they invited a yogi, mistake number one. <laughs> because they should have invited a very commercial person who will come and do dum 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 and everything and go. They invited a yogi and he came. They welcomed him, not like a yogi, like a king they welcomed him. You see how people are trying to welcome me, I thought you heard <laughs> uh, Like that because when you do welcomes like that, some people will start believing they are a king. Not me, I have no such issues <laughs> So they welcomed him like a king, but he's a yogi, he went and sat there. They did all the things that traditionally is done when a yogi comes home and everything. They send a, served a sumptuous meal because he ate one meal a day, he ate well. <laughs> and uh, then the time to leave has come, that is the time when the couple come for a blessing, husband and wife. If you have not seen, especially if they're a Tamil couple, others have forgotten. <laughs> How many Tamil people? Oh. If you see Tamil couple coming for a blessing even with me, they will come and uh, generally men don't know which is which <laughs> or... Uh, normally women are confused about right and left. <laughs> but with this one thing you will see, they know very well which is right and left, which is the left side of their husband, which is the right side of their husband, they know this very well, Tamil woman. <laughs> Others have slowly forgotten. So they will come like this, if the husband is this side and she, she'll... and she'll immediately adjust the direction. <laughs> because when they bow down, they want to bow down together. 
she on the left side, he on the right side to receive the blessing because the Hindu scriptures say, without your wife, you cannot go to heaven. Those sexy women are only for dancing. <laughs> but without your ardhangi, as it is called, ardhangi means uh, she's one half of you, without her, not… they didn't say it's better. She's half, they said, you are thinking you're better. See, that's a sad story. If you have a husband who is less than you, how to live with him? So, uh, they came for a blessing. Yogi raised his hands and said, first let your father die, then you die, then your children die. Both of them. Woke up, I said, what is this? They looked at each other, what's happening here? Then the man found his voice and said, we treated you like a king, we welcomed you, we served, served you food, we did everything. Now you're saying, first my father should die, then I should die, then my children should die. What is this rubbish about? The yogi looked very surprised. Did I say something wrong? Is it nice if you die before your father? Is it nice? No. Is it nice if your children die before you? That's something we don't want to see, isn't it? Your father dies or your mother dies, then you die, then your children die. Everything is in natural order of life. This is how life should happen. Hello? Now about your mother dying, maybe she could have lived for another twenty years, that's your thing. Twenty is enough for hundred. But after twenty, would you let her go joyfully? No. You would anyway make a mess out of it. So it doesn't matter when she leaves. It matters to her life. For you, whether she leaves today or ten years later, twenty years later, you anyway going to make a mess out of yourself. Well, if she left when you're still a child, that is unfortunate. Hmm? Because that is a time when you need your mother. But now you are a grown-up adult, when she leaves, matters to her life, but should not matter to your life. Well, are we going to miss her? Yes. Will we cherish her or grieve her is our choice, isn't it? Why is your mother valuable to you? Because in many ways she has been sweet and wonderful to you. If she was horrible to you, ah, it doesn't matter she is mother or grandmother, you will hate her. Yes or no? There are many, many sweet moments that makes you like this. So your choice is this, will you bring back those sweet moments into your memory and cherish this person who's made you in many ways, at least a part of you is made because of her. If not the whole of you, at least a part of you is because of her. Will you cherish this person, will she be a source of joy for you or will you make it in such a way she is the source of misery in your life? This is your choice. If you want to honor her, she must be the source of joy in your life. If you want to debase her, she must be the source of pain in your life.